So uh, I am happy to introduce uh, Francesco uh, uh, Genovese. The title of your talk, uh, of, the, of the talk, is a derived Gabriel Popescu theorem for T structures via derived injectives. Okay, thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak in this conference. Uh, just to say, this work is, going, is, is joined with Julia Ramos Gonzalez. We are both in the University of Antwerp. I mean, uh, okay. I'm going to leave soon, but we're still in the University of Antwerp. So, okay, um, what I want to talk about here to today is like not really topos theory, but maybe, maybe something which looks more like linear topos theory. So first, first, let me just uh, tell you how, how, can, how can we understand the concept of linear topoi? What should they be? Well, first, in, in, in ordinary topos, in, for ordinary top, topoi, we, we, we have categories and pre sheaves so if we look for linear analogs, then what should they, what should they be? Well, not re really surprisingly, categories should be replaced by linear categories. I mean, over the integers, or if you want over any commutative ring, it's still okay. And instead of pre sheaves you have modules. Modules are mo modules on what? Modules over linear categories. So, <clears throat> indeed, if you have a linear category, let's say this small a, what you can define, what you can define is the abelian category of modules, right? Modules, if you want, which are just linear functors from the opposite to the category of abelian groups. Here I wrote mod, mod, modules over the integers. If you want to replace the integers with any other base ring, it's okay. It's perfectly okay. So what should uh, a linear topos be then? Well, this is kind of well understood and the answer, this should be a Grotenic abelian category. So, Grotenic abelian category means just that it's an abelian category that it is co-complete, filtered co-limits are exact, and it has a small set of generators. And the key result on Grotenic, a key result on Grotenic abelian categories, which, if you want, tells you that they are really something like linear topoi, is the famous Gabriel Popescu theorem. So let me just recall it. So here, here you are, here you, here you have, have it. So you start with an abelian, a grotenic abelian category. You take the small subcategory spanned by the generators, and then you have the restricted unit of functor. Just take an object with the modules over the subcategory of generators obtained just by restriction. And this functor is fully faithful. And moreover, it has an exact left up joint. <clears throat> and also in particular, let me tell, let me tell, let me tell you just a little detail. A way you can prove this, this theorem is, is contained in the in, in a paper, in a very short paper by Mitchell from 1981, I, I think. And uh, one key argument, I mean, th this is based on a trick, and one key argument is that. Exactness of the left of, of the left adjoint is the same as G preserving injectives. Okay. <clears throat> okay, fine. And here, if you want, you have a you have a slogan now. Then Grotendick abelian categories. are exact localizations of module categories. So categories of the form module modules over some small linear category if you want. <clears throat> uh, 
And I mean, if, if you want uh, another analogy, then you can view this Gabriel Popescu theorem if you want as a, somehow a linear version of the Giraud theorem. So uh, the, 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 then, I mean, this was the, like the preamble, if you want, then what do we want, what do we want to do? Well, the goal is like go derived. So the, the goal is to uh, try and understand the notion of linear higher topoe. So higher topoe, we, 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 now know, we, we now know something about them, thanks to the course we had this conference, but I want to concentrate on how do you, how do you make this linear? So first, then you see that what we want is indeed some higher counterpart of Grothendieck Habillian categories. And in particular, a higher counterpart of the category of modules. And what, what would be the idea to go, to go derive? I mean, the, there are actually many approaches and the one I'm going to, to follow here is like using this, this, if you want this, this criterion. And every time you, you encounter an abelian group, you replace it with a complex of a billion groups. I mean, if not a billion group, of course, it works on modules over any commutative ring, of course. <clears throat> and also we want to work up to weak isomorphism, so quasi-isomorphism. Quasi-isomorphism means some maps with some map which induces an isomorphism in cohomology. And then if you, then linear categories are replaced by what? By small DG categories. I mean smaller uh, or, or big, of course. A DG category is just, I mean, if a linear category is a, is a category enriched in like a billion groups, then a DG category is a category enriched in complexes. And nice thing is that if you have a DG category, then you get back a linear category by taking the zero homology. Right? And then maybe more interestingly, what is the replacement then of the category of, of modules? Well, what we actually have is the so-called derived category. Actually work with DG categories. Oh. Implicitly. So what, how, how do you define the derived category? I'm going to cheat a little bit, but these are essentially DG functors. Maybe this should be understood quite, quite better, but let's, let's say that we cheat a little bit here. DG functor from the opposite to the category of, to the DG category of complexes of abelian groups or vector spaces or whatever base you want. So, there's, there's, a, there's an, an interesting observation to be made. This derived category has some nice properties. For example, if you take an object in the derived category, <laughs> then you can build a shift. So, I mean, it's a complex, you just shift the, the complex. And then if you have a map inside this derived category, if you, if you want, this is a chain map of complexes, maybe like a little more complicated, but let's say it's a chain map of complexes essentially then you can form a, a so-called distinguished triangle. And in general, you, you say that any DG category, A, you say that it's pre-triangulated if essentially you, you have these shifts and you have these distinguished triangles inside, it's, uh, inside it. So yeah, so far so good. We have, we have a replacement of like linear categories of the module categories, but then how we understand then the, the replacement of Grote and Abelian categories, then something more has to be said. So first, let me let me recall that there is a, a, a that there is 
Uh, Gabriel proposed the theorem for this pre-triangulated DG categories, if you want, by Poiter in 2010. You need some suitable co-completeness and also suitable generators. But still, this is not this is not the like uh, the the real the the, the 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 complete story, if you want. Namely, the problem is that if you just <laughs> if you just take pre-triangulated DG categories by themselves. They don't look really like the higher counterpart of abelian categories. For example, I can ask this question: What is an injective object? We have a notion of injective object inside an abelian category. Then we, we maybe would like a, a notion of injective object in this higher framework. We need something more. So we make another assumption here. We assume, namely, that that that, that, you, that that we take a small DG category, which is now which is then concentrated in in non positive degrees. <laughs> so, if you want, this is enriched in complexes which are just concentrated in non positive degrees. Okay, then something we can do is is, is the following: so take any object in the derived category, then you can truncate. It's it's just a complex, if you want, of a billion groups. Uh, sorry, of of, of, of modules of, over this DG category, you can truncate and you land in some subcategory of truncated objects. You can also truncate on the other side and you also land in some other subcategory of truncated objects. And then it's nice if you have truncation and then you can, then you can get back cohomology how do you define the cohomology of a module? You can, you can just truncate from one side and then to another. And this thing, oh, well, maybe I have to put some, okay. And this guy here is actually a module over the zeroth cohomology of this DG category. Also, if you want to get the nth cohomology, you just shift. Just take the zeroth cohomology of a suitable shift. Okay, and then you see that that if you take that if you take the intersection of the this truncated object on like on the left, if you want, and these are the truncated objects on the right, then it's indeed the category of modules over the H0 over the zero cohomology. <laughs> Fine. So can we generalize this maybe? And the answer is yes. You have the notion of T structure, it's, it's a crucial one here. So what is a T structure? So you start, on, you start uh, with a pre-triangulated DG category A. Well, actually, you, you actually need just its homotopy category. And then you have some additional data, which amounts to, like, if you want, replacements, formal replacements of this subcategory of truncated objects, subject to some axioms, of course, and you, and you end up with, some, with, with, with the possibility of making, of, of truncating objects. So you can truncate objects and lie, as I said, in this subcategory of truncated objects. You can truncate in like on the left or on the right. And then perhaps more crucially, you can take cohomology of objects. You can define this H0 and of also, of course, the Hn by just shifting. And the point is here that this H0 is going to be a functor. And this functor is going to land into a specific subcategory, you take the intersection of these truncated objects, you call it the heart of the T-structure. And the important fact here is that this, this heart is going to be, is always going to be an abelian category. As like here, modules over this H0 is clearly an abelian category. In this case, is also a growth the category. So maybe we are in the right direction. What can we do here? Uh, yeah, so just let me say, going to abuse notation a little bit, somehow I'll, like I make no difference between A and its homotopy category. So well, you forgive me, but um, just for the sake of simplicity. This, this looks like to be the, the right setting indeed. And let, let's make, let, let me make an example and try to convince you, even if, let me, I don't have much time, but let, at least try to convince you that having a T structure enables you to for example, speak of injective objects, which we will we, we'll now call derived injective objects. And a derived injective object, what is going to be? It's going to be some object E 
in um, which is like lies in the like this this subcategory of truncated objects. So if you want, it's concentrated. It's it's concentrated in in positive degrees. If you want, then we require that the cohomology of this object with respect to the T structure is injective in the heart. And also we require this compatibility if you want. If you take the home from any object to the injective object and you apply the H0 functor, you land into the heart, you get this. And this has to be an isomorphism. For all objects. I mean, and these, these injective objects actually behave quite nicely. So for example, you can do some derived injective resolutions, and this is exploited by, by, by you know, in a work with myself, with Wendy and Michelle. Or maybe, if you recall, I, I said that we had a proof of the Gabriel Popescu theorem, the, the classical one for abelian categories, which used a, a trick and involving and improving exactness of of the left adjoint involved like preservation of injective objects. And then, and, and then, and then we thought, well, maybe we have now the, the derived injective objects. We have the T structures, which look like a, a nice setting where to do like higher, um, where, where, where to, if you want, where to generalize a billion categories. And maybe, so can we achieve a proof of some Gabriel Popescu theorem in the setting of T structures using these derived injectives? And the answer is yes. As, you know, as I'm going to, to explain you briefly. Uh, so what, what, what is a slogan, if you want now? If you, if you take pre-triangulated DG categories and you endow them with uh, some suitable Grothendieck T structures, namely, you would like to require that the height is Grothendieck somehow plus some notion of generators. And these, these things, now we are in a setting where we can understand this, this notion of Grothendieck T structure, even if I won't tell you because it's a little bit technical, but at least if you want to have a, just an idea, I mean, the height is going to be Grothendieck and you have to be a notion of generators. And there, there's, there are going to be some more nice compatibilities, but well, whatever. Uh, these things are going to be our linear higher top way. Once we have a Gabriel Popescu theorem, of course, which I'm not, which I'm now going to 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 explain. So. <clears throat> What would be a Gabriel Popescu theorem for T structures then? So you start with some pre-triangulated DG category and you endow them and, and you endow it with a Grothendieck T structure. So as I said, this is going to be a T, a T structure which is nicely behaved. You have then that the, the heart is going to be Grothendieck. You have some notion of generators, which, I, which I'm now going to explain you. You take a set of generators. These generators are, go are, going, are going to be objects which are going to lie in the this truncated part. So they're going to be in, if you want, negative degrees, non-positive degrees. And also, if you take any object also in the left part, this is going to admit a morphism from some direct sum of objects in the subcategory of generators such that if you take the H0, so the zeroth cohomology with respect to the T structure, you'll get an epimorphism in the heart. And I mean, for that to be well behaved, you will want also that this H0 is going to be, is going to commute with arbitrary direct sums, okay? And then what you do is you take a small u, you truncate this, Cut the subcategory of generators. You, you remember, I, I said that perhaps I didn't say it well, but uh, before I, I told you about the, the derived category. Of course, derived categories 
have to be our main example of growth in the T structures. But for some reason, I mean, technically, this works if you if your DG category, the small a, is concentrated in non-positive degrees. If not, then you you don't have a natural T structure taking the usual truncation of complexes and the usual cohomology of complexes. So you need to truncate, but still it's fine. <laughs> so you truncate this DG subcategory of generators. And of course you have a, a functor from this, 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 this thing to, to your bigger category T structure. And then you also have the, unit, the restricted Yoneda functor. I mean, this is not really a, the G functor, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm a little bit cheating here. Yeah, but uh, let's say it's a DG functor, even if it's not really, a, it's not really a DG functor. But in any case, it works like this. <laughs> and the conclusion is that that this is fully faithful in a weak sense, of course. This has to be interpreted in a weak sense, but still, and has what a T exact left adjoint. The exact means a functor, the G functor, if you want, which preserves the T structures. Here you put the, the, the natural T structure I've explained before, and the T structure here is given. So if you want here, the slogan, and yeah, sorry, let me just explain just, just briefly. The T exactness amounts to G preserving derived injectives. So the slogan, if you want, that every pre-triangulated DG category with this growth and T structure, nice T structure, is a T exact localization of, of a derived category. Of a DG category. In negative, in non-positive degrees. Okay. So it seems really that these guys are the at least a nice way to interpret the concept of linear derived or higher topos. So as some final remarks, now time's almost up. This is not the only possible approach. In, in, indeed, if you look at uh, Jakob Lurie spectral algebraic geometry and you, and you go to appendix C, then you'll find the theory of pre-stable infinity categories and also pre-stable, grotendic pre-stable infinity categories. And uh, he also has a double Popescu theorem, which is more or less the same as, as the one I've, 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 I've told you right, right now. Uh, if you want the new thing, the, the thing which is, which is kind of new in our approach is that the proof is, is actually new and is more based on the short proof of the classical Gabriel Popescu by Mitchell. And it, uses, it, it crucially uses these derived injectives. And by the way, if you just to say, just another thing to say, these derived injectives, you can also prove a kind of a buyer criterion if you want. So they're really nice, they're, they're really a nice, a nice um, generalization of injective objects. And to do to 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 get this, you need these structures. Or if you want, if you want to work with pre-stable infinity categories, then you you need something like this. So what next then? You can use, of course, Gabriel Popescu theorem is quite powerful. You can use it to understand tensor product of this kind of categories with these structures. And in general, but it's maybe more far reaching than this is going to be used to understand what is a linear derived site and also topologies. But you know, that I, we, we think that this is going to be perhaps um, a, little more, a, a little more difficult. So yeah, it's, this is it and so thanks. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, nice talk.